Hi everyone, Mark Moykins here. Yesterday we talked about creating custom animation curves and we're going to talk about more of that today, specifically how to do it in Swift UI, the actual function that you need. And then I want to teach you how to read these animation curves because you're going to have to know how to read them so you know what kind of animation you're going to get. But you'll also have to know, have in mind what kind of animation you want to create and then how to create the curve that will produce that effect. Okay, so let's get started. Now looking here, you can see the Swift UI code. It's animation.timingCurve. And you use this in place of animation.easein, animation.easeout, animation.default. It's just another animation function. Except here, you're going to be defining really two things. The location using the X and Y coordinate of the first Bezier handle and the location of the second Bezier handle using an X and Y coordinate. So that's what you see here. The first two parameters are for the X and Y location of the first handle and the third and fourth parameters are the X and Y location of the second handle. Now, if you've used any kind of vector drawing program, these Bezier handles will be uh, simple for you to understand. You have a good concept and idea of how they work. But if not, then I encourage you to use a, uh, a vector drawing graphic program and just move those handles around and see how it affects the curve. So now that you have your curve, how do you actually read it? Or how can you predictably create a curve that's going to you know, create the effect that you want. Okay, let's take a look at this example here. I took this graph and, and it's really, you know, a, a curve, an animation curve is really just a box with a curved line in it. <laughs> you know, for all intents and purposes, it's a box with a curved line. But there's some things to note here, some things to understand, that the beginning of the line starts in the lower left-hand corner. And that is really the beginning uh, state of your view or whatever it is you're animating. That's the begin state. And your end state after the animation is done is in the upper right hand corner. So those two points are actually fixed. They're not, they're never going to move. And going across is your animation duration. That's the whole of your animation duration. If it's one second, then it's going to take one second to move or to transition this state from the lower left hand corner to the upper right hand corner. Okay. Now the vertical part here is the progression toward the destination, like how fast uh, is it going toward the, the destination. And if we look at this example, you see that I broke it up into three parts just to make it easier for you to understand, makes it easier for me to understand. The beginning part, you notice that curved line almost reaches the 50% mark. So just in the first third of your animation, Say it's one second. Say your animation duration is one second. Now let's make it easy. Say your anima animation duration is three seconds. So the beginning is one second, the middle is one second, and the end is one second. So in the first second of your animation, it's already halfway toward its destination. But then in the middle part, the middle one second, it doesn't really make any progress toward the destination. Maybe about seven to 10%, right? Maybe even less. But when it the line goes horizontal, it's moving slower toward its destination. And then in the last second, it shoots right back up from maybe like the, I don't know, 55% mark all the way to the 100% mark. So what you're going to see here is a fast, uh, an animation that begins quickly, slows down in the middle, and then moves quickly again toward the end. And let's preview this with this uh, little animation here on this page. You see it starts fast, slows down, and ends fast. Okay, let's look at one more example before I end off here. And here, you know, by looking at this, can you predict what's going to happen? Yeah, say this is another three second animation. The first second, the animation is going to move very fast because it's 90%, it's, you know, looking at this curve, I'd say it reaches about 90% toward its destination. It progresses 90% toward its destination there. And then the middle, it slows down a little bit. You got maybe like 5 or 7% toward its destination. And then the last part is like probably less than 3%. So it's going to move very fast, slow, and then slower, even slower toward the end. And that's how you read an animation curve. Now, I talked about setting these values of these handles. And in the example I showed you, the handles are, you know, within the box. But did you know you can actually move those handles outside of the box so the curve goes below the box and above the box? And when that happens, uh, you're going to see some interesting things. 
So keep watching and tomorrow I'll be uh, showing you what happens.